Welcome, 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 beautiful Paris Saint-Germain family. In today's video, we'll digest, go through everything we saw in yesterday's game between Paris Saint-Germain and Montpellier. We looked at it from a collective standpoint, from a tactical standpoint, and obviously from an individualistic standpoint. The first thing is the formation, is the lineup. Usually it's a 2-3-5. It was still a 2-3-5 because Neves was dropping, but he was way more offensively than defensively because what happened this game, comparably to other games, Nuno Mendes pushed up a lot. So both fullbacks were pushing up, attackers were up, up, and then Neves was also part of the attack, sometimes linking. But PSG played even more offensive football in this game, which I love to see. Here we have for the first goal. And for the first goal, I want to look at Neves' movement. He's here as in the left camera roll with the centre-back right behind him. Neves knows about that. He moves into this space. And then the defender has to follow him. Nuno plays it to Barcola. And Barcola knows about this space. He wants to run into it. So he plays the 1-2 with Neves, runs into the space, and this creates the first goal. The, the stunning movement from Joao Neves in this new role is absolutely absolutely stunning and then the finish from Bradley Barcola it's it's amazing it's amazing that we have a player with this caliber with this quality two goals scored his first brace in his entire footballing career congratulations to Bradley Barcola taking new leaps taking new steps every single game he's playing for us four shots 16 passes zero key passes seven touches in opposition box 35 touches and six out of seven duels won I love that Barcola does the offensive stuff but also helps out defensively always humble, always on the pitch. And then his zero key passes and 16 passes. Barcola today was not looking for any teammates. Barcola in this game was looking for goal. And he got his first brace in his career. So let's hope Barcola continues this crazy confidence that he's on at the moment. Next up, I want to look at is this. Obviously, since if you looked at the lineup before the game and all of that, Asensu was the false nine. Asensu was a lot of time in the false nine region slash the number striker region. But for example, in this play, he's dropping here to pretty much, I would say, the Nunu role. Then Nunu took the Barcola role. Barcola took the Neves role. And Neves took the Asensu role. It's the dynamism from Paris Saint-Germain yesterday. They made it so hard for Montpellier to press us. Because if you're one defender, Sometimes you're marking one player, Neves, who has different strength from a player like Barcola, from a player like Asensio. It was just completely impossible for Montpellier to mark anybody out of this game because everybody was moving around. There was nobody to mark. There was only space to cover, but then PSG did the numerical advantage on the other side and then they had to move. So this is something new. Uh, obviously, this is the first time this season we've played with a false line, so we'll have to continue and look how we will look. But yeah, this is insane because now what this means also is that Asensio is open because the, the center back is not going to follow us since you're all the way here and the marker of previously Barcola or Juan Neves they've stayed in their same region because they don't want to leave space in the middle so it's absolutely crazy what Lucho and Paris Saint-Germain are cooking this season and here we have the second goal Bradley Barcola crazy progressive carry takes three players attention puts it inside and Asensio is making a run more of a midfielder crashing into the box and Neves pr pretty much playing the false nine role who puts a beautiful pass to Asensio on a plate and Asensio finished that easy as you like and Joao Neves we have to talk about it four assists in two games now for Paris Saint-Germain obviously in this game two assists two shots four key passes 53 touches 39 passes four defensive actions and three out of four duels one it's just a complete performance from Joao Neves he could have even scored today that's the crazy and scary thing about Joao Neves that he can still improve he can still get better and he's already this good He's already this good and he's 19 years of age. Uh, I, I get amazed every single second by watching Joao Neves on the pitch. What a performance from the player. And looking by his heat map here, touches across all the pitch. Both I talked about this in last tactical video where Kangi Lee and Asensu were playing as the two number 10s, the dual 10s as Neymar and Messi on the Galtier and so on. This game, it was Joao Neves and Marco Asensu because we can see Joao Neves was on the left. He was deep. He was offensive. He was central. He was in the box. He was outside the box and he was on the right side. Just a complete performance from the Portuguese midfielder. Here we have Warren feeding Barcola with a great pass between the lines and there were a lot of runs from PSG this game. Barcola makes the run, then Billy continues the run. The Barcola goes for his finish. Could have done better, but I'm happy. I'm happy with it. Once again here, Barcola just... <laughs> Just feeling himself, being absolutely confident. Could have found a teammate, but he was like, no, I'm gonna do 1v4 and score. It was a bit close, actually. It was a bit close. But here we have for the second goal. Warren Zayda Emery intercepts the ball here from the right side. Gives it to Asensio. And this is where you have the perfect false nine. I don't know. 
blueprint for the Lucho PSG side because Asensio drops a bit deep, gets the ball a bit similar to Firmino and Osama at Liverpool and then you have Salah and Mane. You have your two outlets. You have your left forward and your right forward. That's the difference between our wingers last season and this season. Last season Dembele and Barcola, it was play, make, create danger for Kylian Mbappe. This season it's you are the danger. Asensio, Vitinha, Warren, Joao Neves, all the other players, Hakimi Nuno, they're going to create danger for you guys. You are the danger, man. And that's exactly what you do here. Dembele and Barcola, they just know each other so well. Dembele finds Barcola inside of the box. And here I have to talk about Sensio. Being involved in so many goals, either as a pre-assist, assist, or a goal, having two key passes, three shots, one goal, 37 passes, 48 touches, three passes into the final third, and three touches in the opposition box. So, once again, it's a good to great performance for Marco Asensio this game and in the last game. And it just shows that if you're technically good enough, if you have the right amount of IQ, you don't need to be a high quality player to look good on this PSG side because the system is so well functioning. Everybody's working, everybody's working collectively. And that's why even a player like Marco Asensio, who not many people rate as a PSG starter can still look good in this system. And once again, looking at his heat map, very similar to João Neves, deep, central, right, left, inside the box, outside the box, just a complete. And I, that's why I've been telling you since the last video, the dual tense, that's the new strategy for PSG that teams still can't defend against. What Asensio and Neves did in this game, for me, was two of the most important stuff that happened in this game. Now we're going to take a look at some other goals. Nuno Mendes here, obviously we know he puts in the cross. But here's one thing I have to talk about, which I talked about before, which is the runs. Look at the PSG players making a run. You have Barcola on this guy. You have Warren on this guy. You have maybe Asensio on this guy. I don't know who that is. And you have Dembele, I think, on this guy. But what happens then? Hakim is completely open at the back post. So all of this starts from Paris Saint-Germain having willing runners. I don't exactly remember that much from last season. And if PSG players were as willing of runners, we do know that Kylian Mbappé was obviously not a willing runner. But everyone here is a willing runner taking a defender's attention, which leaves Hakimi absolutely open at the back post. And what a golazo for Master of Hakimi. And what a monstrous performance he had. This is always when you look at Hakimi's stats, it's offensive stats and it's defensive stats. How he just completely, completely dominates that right side is astonishing. One goal, one assist, three shots, four key passes, 113 touches, five touches in the opposition box, six passes into the final third, five recoveries, four defensive actions, and six out of nine duels won. This guy never gets tired. This guy never gets tired. And he was even defending his teammates on the pitch, fighting with those players when Dembele got that yellow card. It was such a beast performance from Hakimi and ever since Luis Enrique has become our manager Hakimi has been the best right back in the world I remember Hakimi from the first two seasons at PSG I was not impressed but now everybody is impressed by Ashraf Hakimi's game by far by far, by far, the best right back in the world. Because once again, it's about being good offensively and defensively. I'm not going to rate bums like Kunde and uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold. One that is only good defensively, one that is only good offensively. I'm going to rate a complete right back, such as Asraf Hakimi. And here we have the Warren Zara Emery goal. Dembele taking the two attention of the two midfielders. Warren charging pretty much into the box and he is pretty much acting as a striker a sense is dropping deep so what happens at PSG in this game that nobody was a striker but everybody was still the striker at the same time so these two Montpellier defenders, they don't know what they're going to do because they can't mark a sense. He's dropped deep. So they're in like in a 50-50 in a space and Warren is absolutely brilliant. Brilliantly. Just not makes Kuyate like he's not there. Puts it past Lecomte. And can we say that Warren Zaira Emre is back? One goal, one key pass, 70 touches, 55 passes, five passes into the final third, nine defensive actions, 11 recoveries and five out of 12 duels. We can see that Warren Zaira Emre is part of the defensive... He's more part of the two centre-backs than the offensive parts, but he still contributed offensively. And what inside of Emery? I just need the consistency now. You were consistently bad slash mid before. Now I need you to be consistently good. I don't want to hype you up too much after this game, but from what I'm seeing from the last game versus La Havre and this game, it's looking good for what inside of Emery. And then we have here Hakimi, how, how easily PSG can create a chance. Obviously, we're 5 in up. There's a lot of space. Montpellier have no confidence. But Hakimi just driving through, penetrating in the central areas, gives it to Neves. And Neves nearly scores an absolute banger. Would have been amazing. 
Dewey obviously came on, had some danger here, dropping to the left side, putting in a cross for Kurumani. Sadly, Kurumani could not convert it. And then we have the pause here from Hakimi to Kangi Lee. And yeah, look, never leave uh, Kangi Lee in this space. J just never do it. It's, it's legit pretty much suicide in football terms because Kangi Lee scored the goal, second of the season, first of the game as a substitute. And I love that our substitute players came on and had an impact, including scoring a goal. We're even close to scoring a seventh there towards the end. Do a feeding in Bayern and Bayern shoots it straight at Lecomte. What I want to look at now is obviously the main stats. 68% position to Paris Saint-Germain in this game. 713 passes. 11 out of 27 shots on target with 3 out of 3 saves. And then when you look at tackles and interceptions, we were just dominating Montpellier in all areas. And even we had more duels won than Montpellier in this game. This is also one thing I've added to these uh, tactical analytical reviews. So we're looking at the stats. So Hakim had the most progressive passes in this game. Dembele had the most dribbles. Fitina had the most touches. Uh, Pacho had the most tackles and interceptions. Hakimi Dembele Nuno had the most cr shock rating actions, most progressive part carries was Nuno, most shots was Dewey, interestingly coming off the bench, most passes was Vitinha, most recoveries was Warren, goals and assists was Dembele, Barcola and Joao Neves all on two, key passes Joao Neves and Hakimi, fouls was Warren, passes into the final third Marquinhos, fouls drawn was Dembele, progressive passes received was Dembele and crosses was Nuno Hakimi and we can see that these are all important stats and they're dominated by all the PSG players, like the only only player I'm not, I'm not seeing in a single stat category here is probably Marco Asensio, but he has like a domination of all the stat categories combined. But I see a lot of Hakimi, I see Warren popping up, I see Vitinha, and even though Osman Dembele had a bad game, I still see him being proactive. And that's the thing with Dembele, even when he has a bad game, you will still notice him. He attempted 10 dribbles, only completed three of them, but he still did stuff and tried to be as big of a threat as possible in this game. And the last thing I want to look at is the goal distribution. We obviously looked at this in the last tactical analytical review, but once again, Juan Neves is 4 GA, Bradley Barcola 3 GA, Dempele 3 GA, Hakimi 2 GA, Kangi Lee 2 GA, Kromani 1 GA, Asensu 1 GA, Warren 1 GA, Nuno Mendes 1 GA, and Gonzalo 1 GA. The only attacker that hasn't gotten a GA for PSG this season is Ibrahim Mbaye. Everyone else has gotten it. Every Every midfielder has gotten a GA this season, apart from Vitina, and he's playing as the deepest six. Both of our fullbacks are contributing to goals and assists. Only our centre-backs, Donnarumma, Mbaye, and Vitinha are missing from the GA chart, which is absolutely amazing to see. But yeah, that's been it from the tactical analytical preview of Paris Saint-Germain versus Montpellier. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to smash the like button. And as usual, allez, allez, allez Paris.